So we're going to do some notes on particle motion, um, and this is really have to deal with applications of first derivative and the second derivative. Um, so let's talk about a couple of quick things about particle motion that are super important. The position function, we also know that as just the original function. So it's usually written as s of t or x of t. Um, essentially, this is f of x. Okay, it's just the function. Instantaneous velocity is that's the velocity of a, fun, uh, <clears throat> of a particle at any instant. So that's going to be f prime. Okay. And we also note that as just v of t. So if you just see v of t, that's really f prime. Okay. Then jump down here to acceleration. Uh, and <clears throat> that's going to be second derivative. So the sec uh, acceleration is the second derivative. And then jerk is the third derivative. That's not really something that we talk about. Um, in calculus, but it's there. Let's get up to here to speed. Um, so speed is actually the absolute velocity, the absolute value of velocity. So people mix up velocity and speed. So velocity has a uh, has a direction, and that's what confuses some people. So velocity can be negative. It just means that it's going left instead of right. That's all it means. So a negative velocity <clears throat> is Really nothing like uh, people think that a negative velocity is that it's like slowing down or anything, but that's just not the case, right? Velocity is just direction. Negative is left, positive is right, and that's it. Okay, so um, with all of that, I'm just going to get to some problems. This little uh, graph right here um, is something good to, to be aware of as we do some of these problems. You can see what some of this means. Quick note over here, though. Is and I just talked about that the particles moving forwards when the velocity is po uh, positive, it's moving backwards uh, when the velocity is less than zero. And then a particle speeds up when the velocity has the same sign. Okay, when the velocity and acceleration v and a have the same sign, and it slows down when they have opposite signs. Okay. So really, what we're going to do here is just one big old problem that's going to capture almost everything we need to know with particle motion. So we have a particle that moves along a horizontal line, so that's position at any time is given right here. And this is only when we're positive, where s is measured in meters and t in seconds. So we're going to go ahead and find the uh, velocity at time t. So this is the original velocity is going to be just that first derivative of that right there. So uh, what is the derivative? Well, we're going to get 6t squared minus 14t plus 4. And now, if I want to know at 1 second, v of 1, I'm just going to plug in a 1 right there. So I'm going to get 6 times 1 squared minus 14 times 1 plus 4. And that is going to be negative 4. And we do need to label this. If, this is, if the position is meters, then the velocity is going to be meters per second. Okay, so it's a negative velocity, which means it's just going backward, or it's going, if it's, since it's horizontal, it's just going to the left. All right, when's the particle at rest? The particle is at rest when v is equal to zero. When is it moving left? Let's talk about that. That's when v is less than zero. And when is it moving right? V is greater than zero. And then we need to justify our answers, and that is super important. A lot of times, to justifying your answers, some people like to write paragraphs and paragraphs. Now, you just, sometimes you just need those couple words, and that's what I'm going like, to really get at for this right here. So what we need to do is to find all of this, which is what's nice, is we can just do this all like in one big old swoop here. We're going to set the velocity equal to zero, and you do a sign chart to see when it's moving left, when it's moving right. And we'll be able to answer absolutely everything. So when I set the velocity, which is right here, 6t squared minus 14t plus 4 equal to 0. Then I can go ahead and factor this. Oh, it looks like I can take out a 3 or a 2 out of everything, make that 3t squared minus 7t plus 2. And this looks like this is going to factor um, 3t. T has to be 2 and 1, so it looks like it's going to go 2 here, 1 here, minus, minus, 
It's going to give us a plus 2. It's going to give us a minus 7. Perfect. So this is going to happen at t equals 1 third and 2. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a sign chart of velocity. So this is v. I'll start at 0, and I'm going to go out to 1 third, and then I'm going to go out to 2. I want to see when is it positive and when is it negative. So I'm just trying to see. Um, I know it changes here at, at 1 third and 2, or it might not change. It's 0 there, so i got to see what it is in these intervals. So all I'm going to do is plug in some uh, values. So what's the number between 0 and 1 third? 1 sixth. Okay, if you plug in a 1 sixth in here, you're going to get a negative value. You plug in a 1 sixth into here, you're going to get a negative value. So a negative times a negative is a positive. I'll do that in uh, different colors. So this can be positive. Okay. Plug in a number between one third and two, like a one. If I plug in a one into my velocity, and again, it's much easier to plug it into the factored form because I don't care what the actual number is. I just care, is it positive or negative? So I plug this into the factored form. If I plug in a one, I'm going to get a positive and a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. If I plug in a number bigger than two, like three, I'm going to get positive and positive, which is positive. So using all of this work, I can figure all of this out. All right, and I'm going to justify my answers for all of these. So when it's at rest, it's at t equals 1 third and 2. Now why? Because of v is equal to 0. And that's all I need to say is that the velocity is 0. <coughs> Nothing else. So it's at rest at these times because the velocity is zero. When is it moving left? Now this is going to be an interval now. So it's moving left between one third and two. And you're going to use parentheses. The reason that you don't use the brackets is because at one third it gets not included because one third is actually equal to zero. So it's left from one third to two because V is less than zero. Or you can also say V is negative. Either one works. And when is it going to the right? It's going to the right between zero and one third. And from two to infinity, we do not need a union sign here. We just put the intervals where it's going to the right. And then this is because, whoops, good, all right, because uh, v is greater than zero, which just means that v is positive. Okay. What's the acceleration at time t, and then acceleration at one? So this is very similar to what we did here for a. Just we're going to take the second derivative. So I need the so I need a of t, which is the same thing as v prime of t, which is the same thing as double s double prime of t. They're all the same thing. Okay. So I take the second derivative. I'm going to get 12t minus 14. And now what's a of one? Just by plugging in a one, you're going to get a negative two. This is going to be in meters per second squared. So velocity is distance per time. Acceleration is distance per time squared. Displacement. Let's talk about what displacement means here. That's going to be the end minus the start. So it's not how much we travel. This where are we versus now versus where we started. So all we're going to do for displacement from 0 to 3 is s of 3. That's the end minus s of 0. And that's the beginning. Okay, and There's a good chance for a lot of these problems you will be given the calculator because sometimes these uh, functions are a little bit nastier. Okay, So I'm just going to go ahead and speed ahead. And I um, already plugged this in my calculator. This is actually going to be 3. And since this is... Uh, 
distance, this is 3 meters. Or not distance. Since this is the first derivative, it, we're just talking about meters. Okay? Now here's where it gets a little tricky. What's the distance traveled? Okay? I'm going to look up here between 0 and 3 on my little chart that I have right here. Okay? So I traveled to the right here, and then I traveled to the left here, and then I traveled to the right here. What I need to do is find out how much I traveled here, add it to how much I traveled here, and add it to how much I traveled here up to 3. So the distance is going to be how much did I travel, what's my displacement from s of a third minus s of 0. And the reason I put this in absolute value is because distance is always positive. So how much did I travel from there to there? Plus... How much I travel from there to there? So again, s of 2 minus s of 1 third. And because of these absolute values, this order does not really matter. Okay. And then plus this little uh, interval right here, ending at 3. So 3 minus s, oops, s of 2. It's supposed to be an s. Okay, so you would just plug in a one-third, you would just plug in a zero, you subtract those, plug in a two, minus one-third, subtract those, okay, so you can always pause this video and try that on your own, see how you do if you match up, I'm going to get an answer of 12.259 meters. Final question, when is it speeding up? And when's it slowing down and justify? So for speeding up, and I this I mentioned this already on the front page of your notes right down here. So speeding up is when your velocity and your acceleration are are both positive or both negative. So they're the same sign. Now the reason is is because a lot of people think that a negative velocity is slowing down. That's not the case. If Negative velocity just means it's going to the left. Negative acceleration just means it's going to the left. Oh, it's going to the left. Accelerate to the left. So if it's going to the left, positive for velocity, and going to the left. Well, on the video, I guess I do it this way. <laughs> on the left is that way on the video. So if you're going to the left, uh, increasing your velocity and your acceleration, then you're speeding up to the left. And to the right, if you're if you have a positive velocity and acceleration, you're speeding up to the right. Okay. Slowing down is just when you have velocity and acceleration have different signs. So if velocity is positive this way, acceleration is this way, it's slowing down. Okay. So to do that, I need to match up my um, my sign charts here. I do need a sign chart for acceleration, and then I'm going to put them together. Now, I already have the sign chart up here. You don't need to make a second one, but I will just so we can match everything up. So this is my sign chart from earlier. Okay, and this was positive negative, positive. Now to make my sign chart for acceleration, I need to know when the acceleration is zero. So I'm going to set A of t, which is 12t minus 14, equal to zero. And I got that from right up there. Okay. So now when I set t at the 14 over divided by the 12, that's going to give me 7 sixths. So I'm going to get 7 sixths. So I'm going to line this acceleration chart up. It's going to know where 7 sixths lies. Um, it's going to be just over 1. So it's going to be somewhere in here. So here's my 7 sixths. If I plug in a number that's less than 7 sixths, like 1, for instance, I plug in 1 in, I'm going to get a negative value. And if I plug in a number that's greater, like a 2, I'm going to get a positive value. So now, using us, 
I can figure out where I am speeding up. So speeding up, when do they have the same sign? When do these overlap? All right, so I'll do this in bright green. If you notice that these are the same signs here, and these are the same signs here. Okay. So this is speeding up from one third to seven sixths, and from two to infinity. Why? Because velocity and acceleration have the same signs. All right, and again, you can do VFT and AFT like you did down here. You could just do V if you wanted. I just did V up there. It's not going to matter. Um, and then once it's slowing down, slowing down everywhere else, it's going to be between 0 to 1 third. Um, that 0, it, it could be, um, doesn't. they're not going to take off points one way or another, but that one could be a uh, solid one or it could be an open bracket. It's not going to matter. And then from 7 sixths to 2, because V of T and A of T have different signs. And that's all we need for our justification and our answers. So that is just about every problem that you'll see for particles.